I, I, I love solar panels. I'm a fan of wind farms uh, and renewable energy. But the key thing is, James, we need to make the wind turbines. We need to make the solar panels here in the UK. So rather than send you know, hundreds of thousands of British jobs overseas, particularly to China, uh, or billions of pounds of our money overseas, and as you've just quite rightly said, um, you know, these, these renewable uh, projects, they all end up owned, being owned by private equity, very often owned overseas, as you know, you're, you're very familiar with uh, that part of the, uh, the corporate world. And, you know, these groups, they need the returns on their money, you know, of around about 12, 14, 16 percent. Whereas the government could be producing, uh, could be making these wind farms, funding these wind farms, sorry, um, and the government's cost of money is about between between a half and one percent. So what's what's happening, James, is that the government thinks it's very clever, having essentially um, outsourced uh, the cost of putting these up. But what it's actually done is that it's it's put a huge annual cost on every single household, which of course affects the least well off, the lowest paid, the poorest in society, the most. And what I what I really do object to is. You know, the, the, the wealthy middle class metropolitan elite, you know, who, like all of us, are concerned about climate change. But the way that they, that the government's proposals that they perpetuate and they promote will simply disproportionately impoverish the poorest in our society the most. OK, we, now you, you, you say that to... and I and I understand that. But is it fair to even um, to. Is it fair to be, in this day and age, a climate sceptic? So, for example, there are some people who will say this stuff is put together uh, by um, people who are driven by different motives, uh, that the climate change is being driven by changes to magnetic poles, all that sort of stuff. Do you think that that is in the realms of conspiracy theory and the climate is changing and we need to do something? Or do you take the view that we are being pushed into making decisions and taking decisions that are perhaps driven by a different agenda? Look, it, it's hard to know some of these, uh, you know, what drives certain people. But you know, the mainstream clear data shows that, that yes, there is warming taking place, and you know, I think that most of us uh, understand that. And there are, there are things that we can do to reduce our emissions. I, for example, uh, play my part. Both uh, the deputy leader and leader of Reform UK, we've both got electric cars. So yeah, I, I think there are things we can do. But what we what we shouldn't do, James as we look to reduce emissions over the next 20 to 30 years, is force the cost unnecessarily on the lowest paid in society, uh, the least well off, uh, with plans that are simply not the right way to go. And at the moment, what troubles me is there's no discussion about alternatives. Let me example, let me ask you let me ask you just finally, Richard, uh, before we go to the news, um, we've put this Twitter poll up, uh, which says the world will face catastrophic climate change unless immediate action is taken, according to Alex Sharma, the UK minister in charge of climate talks to be held in November. Are you worried about climate change? And the simple answer is yes or no. Richard Tice, what is your answer? Yes. Oh, yes. And I think we I think we can do so. I think we can do we are doing. You know, let's celebrate our success, James. The UK has led the way. We've reduced our emissions by 50% in the last 30 years. Let's celebrate our success. Let's continue to lead the way with technology. But let's not be daft and stupid about forcing the cost unnecessarily from the wrong schemes like daft proposals to ban all our boilers on the least we're off in the poorest in society. That's, that's no way uh, to make a difference.